That's what it's all about. You know, many people teach, if you'll just say you're saved, you'll be all right forever and you'll never have another moment's problem. That's just not true, okay? You know why? God doesn't appreciate hothouse lilies. That the first time they get out in the sun or the first time old Satan gives them a, a little ruffle, they just wilt and kick up their heels and forget it. There is a controversy between Satan and Almighty God. And he chooses people and he tests them himself occasionally to see if you're made out of the right stuff, to see if you're a can-do type person. And as we'll close this lecture, you'll see that he even says to you, examine yourself. Okay. And mainly, it is whether or not you can be deceived, basically. Can you? How familiar are you with Father's Word? We live in a high-tech world where, you know, many of us have had to learn a great deal about high technology, but it would seem that theology has kind of fallen by the wayside because it's very difficult to find a person that you can really sit down and have a deep discussion in God's Word. Oh, they know all the little Q words, and it's wonderful to be saved. But saved from what? You know, God makes a lot of promises in His Word, but there's always a condition connected with each one of them, that word if. It would seem people stop reading there and mentally block it out. You've got to obey your Father. He will never leave you, nor will He forsake you, and He will never test you beyond what you're able to bear. You want to know where that's written? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And He will always show you a way out. So you're, you're in good shape, even starting, regardless of what comes up. But it's just like God wanted to be proud of Job. He even said to Satan, Hey, what do you think about my boy? You can't have him, can you? He won't give in to you. And Satan said, well, not with that wall you have thrown around him. But you see, God is your wall. And if you love and trust the Father, that wall is around you. And Satan said, well, if you'll just pull that down a little bit and just let me have my way with him, you'll see how, for, how quick he'll renounce you. Job never did. Job, of course... Um, means uh, kind of like um, um, trouble. That's what the, his name means. And it's an example to you that if you stay with the Father, he'll always double you in blessings. Just don't give in to Satan. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 6. We're going to start in the Old Testament where some of the things are laid out. And hey, it's up to you, friend. I don't know, how does God bless you? How are you doing? You got peace of mind? Is, and um, how are you doing in this old world? Uh, that's, that's kind of what our Father would... Um, now, here we're, talk, we're going to talk both to the house of Judah and the house of Israel. They're two separate houses. And if you're a student of history and of God's Word, you're familiar with that. Pick it up with chapter 6, Jeremiah, verse 26, and it reads, O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth, and wallow thyself in ashes, make thee mourning for an, for an only son, or I might say the only son. Most bitter lamentation for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. In the future sense, you know who that spoiler is. It's the spurious Messiah. I don't know how you geared for that, friend, because it's going to happen, and it will happen in this generation. Verse 27, I have set thee for a tower, that means a watchtower, a watchman, and a fortress among my people that thou shouldest know and try their way. That means to assess them as an assessor. The... Um, the um, word uh, try. I want you to make a note of that. In the Hebrew, it is bekan, bakan. 
And it means to test, or even if you would, investigate. Investigate. I've set you up there as a tower to watch, and I want you to investigate current events as they apply to the letter that I have written you. Okay? And uh, you're to be an assayer. What is that? Did he say you were to be a judge? No, you're not to be a judge. Okay, God will manage the judging quite well, but you are at least to have discernment where you're not led down some slippery slope by nonsense or foolery. Well, how do I know the difference? God will never mislead you. People will. Okay? Verse 28. They are all grievous revolters walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. Now, if you're a saying something, what are you supposed to be looking for? Silver or gold, something of value. Now, take that in a spiritual sense. Does the spiritual thing that you're given from the world, does it lift you up? Does it give you solidity? Does it give you a foundation to stand on? Or do you just kind of drift into, out into boom boom land? It shouldn't, if you're intelligent, it doesn't take long to make the discernment. Okay. He said, all they are is um, iron and brass. What does that mean? You're not going to find any silver there. You can try all you want to. You're not going to find any silver when you put the heat to them. Verse 29, the billows are burned, the lead is consumed of the fire, the founder melteth in vain, the refiner, for the wicked are not plucked away. In other words, slag in a furnace always goes to the outside and is cast off, okay? 30, reprobate are rejected, silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. You don't, if you were to turn back to Jeremiah, don't, you don't have to because I probably, you've been there before. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8, God divorced Israel. And God, he did. God's a divorcee. Why? She wouldn't listen. Thought she knew everything. Just went her own way. I'll dream up my own God. I'll dream up my own religion. I'll worship whatever I want to. Well, hey, have to. It's your, you know, it's your ship, you sail it. And we, and we can even still be friends, all right? Hey, it's all right with me. But God expects reverence, and he expects you to absorb his truth, whereby you're not easily made a fool of. And his word, this whole word, is written to one man's family. And the only time it mentions other people is when they come in contact with that family. So it's not a hard book to understand, but you've got to take it from beginning to end. Some would tell you it's just fairy tales. Well, hey, how come history backs most of it up then? Don't be made a fool of. God will test his children to see what they have absorbed and what they can handle. If you meet his conditions, you've got nothing to worry about. But what can you gain? What he's saying here, I expect you, I've set you up on a tower of what? Knowledge, wisdom, common sense. Is that when some kind comes along with false teaching, you reject it. As a matter of fact, traditions of men will make void the word of God. Don't ever listen to this man or any other man without, or woman without checking them out in the Word of God. God will never deceive you. It is that without clear understanding, you could deceive. Turn on with me, if you would, to chapter 9. Let's hang on to this same subject. Pass the test of the assayer. And the assayer, of course, is Almighty God. Chapter 11. I'm sorry, chapter 9. And let's pick it up with verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. 
For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slander. Now, when you test, what does that mean? Not, not all of them are. But you be, what he's saying is at least check it out. You know, before you would give a baby a bottle, wouldn't you check the temperature of the contents? Of course you would. It means he put this thing up on your shoulders for a reason. Use it. Okay, think. Verse 5. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and worry themselves to commit iniquity. And if you're not careful, that's why you need the ability to translate for yourself. So that you know what the letter from God has to say. Whereby if this person or any other person tells you a certain thing means a certain thing, or this means it has a separate meaning, or to more than one meaning, that you can check it out. Okay? Um, this is, he did not, I want to make it very clear, he didn't say hate your brother, and he didn't say hate your neighbor. He said, say them, check them out, be careful. Okay, verse 6. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. And, and you can, you can't partly know God. You either know him or you don't, period. It's just like faith. You either have it or you don't. If you don't have it, do you know something? You just unplugged yourself from Almighty God. Period. Over. It's not to say you can't come back to Him. But you've got to have faith in Him, in His Word, or you're, you're pumping air. Verse 7. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? He's going to purify her. Now understand, well, many would say, well, that sounds like a mighty mean God to me. He's speaking in a spiritual sense. He's going to put him in the fire. I don't know, how do you do as a Christian? When the going gets rough, do you kind of, oh, I didn't know God would allow that. Well, you've probably never read the word then. The thing is, is you put a stop to it. You handle it. You put your foot down. Christians are not second-class citizens. You put your foot down. You take care of business. Christ gave you power over all of your enemies. Use it. Use that authority. That's, that's why God likes to kind of melt and sift and sort it out. This whole earth age is to get rid of those that followed Satan in the first earth age and that still would after a savior was sent. If they want to still follow him, adios amigos. This whole earth age is about testing a saying. Verse eight, their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth his weight. You know, Always teach truth. Don't, don't try to change some person's religion. You should never, you know, everybody has to sell his own, sail his own ship. You know, what you teach is God's word. Let God's word do the work and you'll be blessed. All right? Verse 9, shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? You know, you, when you turn, when a nation, and this is speaking in a national sense, when a nation turns its back on God, it's looking for trouble. Do you want to know something? How was it possible that... I will go all the way back to North Korea. I was there. I can speak. How could 12,000 men and women, there were some fantastic nurses with us, defeat 120,000 Chinese along with, I don't know how many North Koreans, probably the same amount. We came out. Why? God was with us. It makes a difference. 
How do you think that we have lost such few personnel in Afghanistan today, helping to build up the morality there of women and to take away such an evil, satanic person as that would come over and strike this nation, which we've always been able to protect. God is with us. We're doing it right. And he will not turn his back on this nation. We have some nations that are taking advantage of the situation. That's life. And that's how it goes down. But we cannot stand for someone to attack this nation. God would not approve. So let the chips fall wherever they may. God will bless us and he will curse those that come against us, whoever they are. Verse 10, for the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing and for the inhabitants of the wilderness a lamentation because they are burned up so that none can pass through them. Neither can men hear the voice of cattle, both the fowl of the heaven. Meaning, in the end time, what, what, what did men do with cattle? They didn't have a grocery store then. That was your food, a famine. There's just one problem. The famine in this end generation is for hearing the true word of God. Not some one verse Charlie or some dreamer, but taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Pass the test. Be a saint. How, how familiar are you with God's word? Do you know the spurious Messiah will appear first, six trump? And it isn't only the New Testament that declares that, it's the old as well. You just heard it. Okay, with chapter 11 now of Jeremiah. We're not going to move around a whole lot. Pick it up with verse 9, same subject, basically. And the Lord said unto me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Again, what is the conspiracy between Satan and Almighty God? Okay. They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers for which refuse to hear my words. That's important to God. If you turn your back on God's word, then you're turning your back on him. And they went after other gods to serve them, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Here we have both houses. Have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Uh, they have, um, the people have uh, actually grown away from the word of God. Now, this is speaking in a natural sense. Not all people do, all right? Verse 11, therefore, th thus saith the Lord, behold, or you look here, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Well, why in the world wouldn't God answer? Because they're talking to a different God. That's why. I mean, if your name is uh, Sue, and I come up and say, oh, Mary, oh, Mary, 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 you probably wouldn't answer or you'd say, my name ain't Sue <laughs> or Mary or whichever I said, all right? <laughs> However it be, get your late, don't ever get your women mixed up, all right? <laughs> anyway, your ladies, I mean. Now, um, God is going to correct those. Do you think he's going to correct those that love him? No, but, but you're going to be tested because there is a conspiracy. And again, he wants you to be wise enough that you can handle it, that you won't fall into a trap where you're in trouble in the first place. Okay, verse 12. Then shall the cities of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the times of their trouble. And that's the times of Jacob's trouble as well. If you turn your back totally upon God, upon his word, then he won't save you. I thank God that he blesses America. We have so much to be thankful for. We didn't happen by accident that we're the strongest superpower of all superpowers. 
It didn't happen because we're Satan worshipers. It happened because we love our Heavenly Father. And He will test us. He tested us on, though He did not, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. God did not call September the 11th to happen. But if you don't carry your garbage out, He'll let it happen. You might say, well, how did it happen? Well, because we destroyed the CIA whereby we had no counterintelligence to spot them in their own rat's nest and poison them. That's how it happened. We didn't carry our garbage out. And God will bring upon you whatever you ask for. That's the way it stands. Verse 12. Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem... We got that, okay. And uh, 13. And according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem... Have you set up altars to that shameful thing, meaning an idol, even altars to burn incense and to Baal or Satan? Okay, You can be misled, my friend. You want to be very careful. This has happened in history, and it happens down through the ages. Verse 14, Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or a prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. And that day of trouble is coming in the future is since. It's known as the days of Jacob's trouble. Is it here yet? No. But it's building to it. I don't know. How are you going to be fixed? Are you familiar with it? 15. What has my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed uh, from them. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. Called biblical ignorance. I mean, a lot of people do something holy. They think they're doing something holy. And you've all heard me do it. I'm going to do it again. At the high day of Christianity, Passover, Christians still to this day call it by the name Ishtar. And they roll fertility eggs, which was a, a, a heathen orgy and was brought into the church. That doesn't feel good, does it? No, it doesn't. But it did. Why? Because people are ignorant of God's Word. Also brought in on that Ishtar, which was a heathen goddess, quick like a bunny. And teach their little children, you know, this is so, so religious. Well, it isn't at all. Hey, I don't care what they do. You'll never hear me say, hey, they, you know, don't ever go there because they do that. But don't be ignorant of what they're doing. You know, take a good college Webster's Dictionary and look up the word Ishtar. Easter, and it'll say a day named from a heathen goddess, when the word in the Greek manuscripts, which is only one time in the King James, is Passel, which is Passover. How did it get translated that? Try to pick up membership. I don't want that kind of membership. People that would rather be ignorant and to, to teach truth, to gather numbers. Numbers don't mean anything. Um, so, what he's saying is, I don't see all that much holy in her yet. Verse 16, The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of a goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. In other, it's symbolic of God's judgment and his testing. Listen, I don't care what God does to nations, as long as you stick with Him, you don't have anything to worry about. You can handle it. He will never burden you with more than you can handle, and He will always show you a way out. Verse 17, For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves 
Who did it to them? They have done it to themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. You shall place no other gods before me. That's what he said, and he meant it. And if you're not real careful, you can let a house become an idol. You can let a car become an idol. Well, how's that, brother? Well, if you let it come before God. Well, I'd really like to study with God's work, but I've got to wash the house today. I have to work overtime to get it paid for. The usury is killing me. Who are you paying the usury to, friend? How much of it goes to your principal? You got five and they got a hundred, didn't it? Well, you're really, you know, that has to be, but that's the way it is. But it's best if you can stay out of it. Okay. Um, a car. Man, I've got to get me a new buggy. Won't I look good in that? Got to polish that. I would go to church. I would, st I would go in the house and study God's Word a little bit, but I got to polish this buggy so I'll be looking good. I'm just saying it's real easy for you to justify things if you're not careful. And I'm not saying you should become a religious fanatic. But don't ever put anything before God or you're asking for a cursing. And you'll get it. Verse 18. And the Lord hath given me knowledge of it. He's opened my eyes, and I know it. Then thou sh showedest me their doings. You, you made me aware of what's going on in the world, of the conspiracy and what's happening. 19, but I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. Jeremiah here is a type of Messiah. He said, I didn't know it. He said, I was innocent. When I came here teaching the truth, they're wanting to kill me. And they about did old Jeremiah in a time or two. And I wasn't aware of it. They, that is uh, brought to the slaughter. And I knew not that they had devised devices against me saying, let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof. And let us cut him off from the land of the living that his name may be no more remembered. And of course, that's what happened in Christ's case. And this was the top fort runner of it, a type that you're to learn by. 20, but O Lord of hosts, that judgeth righteously, that trieth the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I revealed my cause. Again, here the word trieth is pakan in the Hebrew tongue. It means investigate. Lord will try your heart. He wants to know what you're made of. He wants to know, hey, if you're true to him or not. Are you? Are you faithful? Can you be trusted? That's what he wants to know. Can he count on you when the chips are down? Can he use you? Can he depend upon you? So there again we have the word test, investigate, do you pass the test? Therefore, verse 21, therefore thus saith the Lord of the men of Anathoth that seek thy life, saying prophesy not in the name of the Lord that thou die not by our hand. Do you, do you know what this city Anathoth is? I mean it's for preachers, all right, for priests if you prefer. I mean, these are supposed to be men of God. And they're saying, you either stop teaching God's word or we're going to have to kill you. Now, that's a sad state of affairs, friend. But I'm going to tell you something. If you openly today on national television teach God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, I assure you, you will receive some hate mail. And it, tick, it, it tickles me to death. I get so many good letters and people, when it's really the Word doing it, they'll say, you are great. Well, it doesn't mean it's great, it's the Word. And finally, when I get one of those telling me how no good I am, like, you know, it kind of, it just wakes you up and gives you a little pleasure there. Out of, out of maybe 4,000 letters, get two knuckleheads like that. And, 
Everybody has to have that percentage. But you will not be popular. And you know the sad part about it is, is usually those letters are from men of Anathoth. Do you know what I mean by that? I'm, I guess I'm kind of speaking in a parable. That's preachers, okay? Our mailing list looks like who's who. And I would never in my life, but why? Well, hey, they can get a lot of good sermons out of our teaching chapter by chapter and verse by verse by picking up on certain things. And it's a strange thing, but it always seems, seems new to them. And you know something? No one can remember all of God's Word. And you'll always find new when you go over it. So it's good when all people can study together. I would never embarrass any one of them that chooses to study with this brother. Okay? I would not. Um, verse uh, 22. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. That's for warning truth. It, you know, it is too bad that we can't have peace in the world. I, I really wish that we could. There's only one prince of peace. 23. And there shall be no remnant of them, for I will bring evil upon the men of Anathoth, even the year of their visitation. Of course, there's that year of Jacob's trouble again. That has to do with uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 61. We're not going there where Jesus would get up and read that chapter from Isaiah and stop in the middle because the next was the day of vengeance. He stopped. It's not that time yet. <clears throat> so God tries the hearts of people. Why? He loves you. You might say, well, my goodness, that's a funny way to show love. Well, let me ask you something. If your children are getting in trouble, let's say that, let's say that you have... I'm going to date myself, but I can't. It just popped into my mind. Say you put a tea kettle on an open fire, okay, to brew a little tea. And the stove is a little low, and you've got a five-year-old in there, and they hear the whistle blow on the kettle, and they head for it. They're going to get that kettle of boiling water. And you've got a three-year-old playing right beside them. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, Please, Johnny, the water's hot. It might burn the little one. You're going to say, Johnny, <laughs> don't touch it. You're going to hurt yourself. Well, God does this. He feels the same way about you. He does not wish that you should hurt yourself. That's why a lot of times people will pray for rattlesnakes to play with. Okay? It'll get you hurt. God won't give them to you. All right? Or you better hope he doesn't. It might mean he's through with you. I don't know. Anyway, no, God's never, th I shouldn't say that. God is never through with anyone, all right? His heart, he doesn't get up every morning and say, wonder who I can zap today, you know? He just likes to educate his children. Education is a fantastic thing, especially if it's in God's word, okay? Whereby you can handle it and you know how to bring blessings into your life whereby you're successful, whereby you can touch people's lives. It's important. That's why an education in God's Word, do you, know, do you know the main reason? Do you know that many technologies will change, but God's Word never changes, never. It'll be the same Word even in the eternity. The documentation for that is Mark 13 plus many other places. Psalms 26. Very short psalm. Test yourself. Do we pass the test? Is God pleased with us? Are you being blessed? Do you have peace of mind? Are you easily confused in your life? You shouldn't be. Psalms 26, verse 1. Judge me, O Lord. Does that mean you look at me? For I have walked in mine in integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. I'm not going to waver. I know I'm on a solid foundation that I'm doing what is pleasing to you. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try 
That means test, investigate my reins. That means my mind and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I can see it, God. You have opened my eyes to your truth. Now, you know, as, and for what you see at the moment, that's fantastic. That's what he wants for you. Verse 4, I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. That means people that are hypocritical. What somebody that's hypocritical? Well, be patient with them. It's somebody that doesn't believe God's word is true. And maybe at one time in your life, you didn't. But take the time to check it out historically. And then answer me one question. How can... Words Christ spoke on the cross were promised by God that would happen over a thousand years before the fact. Man can't swing that, friend. God's word is always true. So hang, let, let me put it a different way. Who do you hang out with, the dissemblers? No, why? Why not hang out where you grow? Why not hang out? A real good reason is where you're blessed. For to have God's blessings is a wonderful thing. I'm sure there are many people wonder how in the world could that country preacher be on 325 television stations and never beg like the rest of them have to. Think about it. Because God blesses. And when some nut comes along and try to change what's working right, God's word, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep doing as God's blessings flow, okay? Hang out where you learn truth and you're blessed. That's the proof in the pudding. Verse 5, I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Why, well, you wouldn't learn much. It's, it's like you've all, many of you have heard me say, you know, you move into an area and you want some advice. Where, where do you go to get that advice? Go to the most successful person in the new community you moved into that is successful in that business and ask their advice. Or go down here on the corner of the Spit and Whittle Club and they'll give you more advice than you. I mean, they can write a book on advice, but it's not worth a flip because none of them are successful. Always go to success. That is your Father Almighty God, and you'll never go wrong. I will wash mine hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish, that I may proclaim, that I can make it known with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wonderful works. God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He loves you. Do you know why he created you? Have you ever read the last verse of Revelation chapter 4? For his pleasure. How long has it been since you pleasured him? Do you know that he doesn't have anyone else like you? He created you because he wanted you. Your DNA is different. Your fingerprints are different. You're just a different person, a different personality. And he loves you. Lord, I have loved the, the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Where is that? It's where God's word is taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Not where you got some one, one verse revolving rev. Do you know how long it takes you to make it through the Bible one verse at a time once a week? 600 years. You got any great expectations of learning anything? And I'm not criticizing. I am a teacher. And it's important to me to get God's word taught rather than men's traditions. Verse 9. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men. In other words, as much as can, let us, let us live in peace. If not, we can handle it. All right? Um, verse 10 in whose hands is mischief and their right hand is full of bribes you, know, you deal around with a bunch of crooks and guess what you're going to get yeah you're going you're to get robbed you're going to get done in you're, you're going to get short changed well I just 
being a good Christian, I thought, do you know I should trust the brother? <laughs> oh boy, there's one like that born every minute. Be wise. Don't let someone make a fool out of you, okay? Christians are not second class citizens. We are the largest blessed nation in the world. And there's a reason for it. Don't ever be ashamed of it. Stand up for it. Political correctness is out the window. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Verse 10, 11. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. That means my common sense. How you fixed for it, friend? Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. If you're in the right place and if you're on God's word, you're not going to slide. And, and ask God to judge you. He's going to anyway. Okay. But be sure of yourself with his word that you know where you stand. You know, he that is your closest relative, you don't have a relative closer than your heavenly father. And never insult the dignity of another entity whatever it is they're sailing their own ship let them sail it but you stand on that solid rock and know the course of your life and you will be blessed that's how you tell if you're not doing so good you need to dig a little deeper into his word and find out why why am I so confused all the time? Well, find out. You know, it is written in Mark 13, Behold, I have foretold you all things, everything you need to know. I don't know, have you read what he told us? That's the important thing, okay? Turn with me to Psalm 66 as we begin to get down to a close here. Psalm 66, and then we're going to leave the Old Testament. And Psalm 66, verse 1, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands, that means this earth. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Celebrate it. Pay attention to your Father and thank him for everything he does for you. It makes his day. Verse 3, Say unto God, How terrible art thou, Art thou in thy works? How amazing, awesome is a better translation. Awe-inspiring would better fit. To the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. They're going to surrender. There is a day coming when every knee is going to bow to our Heavenly Father. It won't last long. There'll still be some that know it all, that'll sneak off over in a corner. And then at, when uh, Revelation chapter 20 comes to pass, that's it. But they sailed their own ship into it, got no excuse. Verse 4, all the earth shall worship thee. Again, every knee. That's a, there's only one given time that's going to happen. Okay, And shall sing unto thee, they shall sing to thy name. What does this pause mean in the music? It means... Something was just said, and I'm going to connect something with it. And what it means, I'm going to connect the reason for it following the exhortation. And here it comes. Verse 5. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible. He's awe-inspiring in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the, f the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. I mean, he helps his children. Seven, he ruleth by his power forever. Not, not some short thing you're signing up for, friend. His eyes beheld the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. And then another pause in the music. Eli, what are we going to connect this time? 
It means he's returning from that answer to the exhortation. Let's hear it. O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. You know, it amazes me when some Christian will say, I, I, I tell you what, someday I'm going to get around to giving my soul to God. <laughs> yeah, I would do that. I'm going to give my soul to God. They've never read the Bible. They're not familiar with the Word. Do you know why? Because in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, God says, All souls are mine. I mean, friend, He's already got your soul. It's what He does with it that should be important to you when He tests you. Verse 10, For thou, O God, hast proved us. I guess you know what this word proved means. Have proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. God is going to test those that love him. I don't know, can you bear a little testing? If he roughs you up a little bit, are you going to be weak and run? You know, uh, God at the same time chastises us if we need it. Okay, I know none of you ever do. Okay, But he will do it. Okay, But I mean for no reason... When he prepares you for what's ahead, sometimes he will test you to see if you believe him. Why? Well, if he really puts you in a bad day, I mean, you're ready just to chunk it to the wind, then you'd better remember 1 Corinthians 10, 13 or many other scriptures. You can cut it. He's never going to put more on you, so whatever it is that's on you that is so bad, brace up, take care of the roughest first, I mean, take name, kick dragon, get it squared away, and get about your father's business, okay? I mean, take care of business. Don't let some evil spirit, bad spirit, if you prefer to call it a negative thought, throw it over your shoulder. Get rid of it. Be positive. Take care of business, okay? Uh, verse 10, For thou, O God, hast proved us thou, and tried us as silver. Thou broughtest us into the net. Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Okay. And uh, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. He'll always do it. I don't know what you got, friend. Are you a wimp? Whereby, oh, Lord, I hope, I hope, nothing, I hope nothing too difficult happens. Why not? A little exercise before breakfast is good. Okay? Handle it. Be sure of yourself. Put your faith in God and know you're a can-do type person. I mean, this is not just a book. It's the truth. And He will stand with you. And He will always bring you into a much better place. The word is moist. In moist place, that means it's not the dry desert. You can produce spiritually in a moist place. You can produce, and God will strengthen you. Don't just be one of these that just lives from one day to the next, wondering, I just wonder what's happening. Read it. Understand what tomorrow brings. The minor prophets are like reading tomorrow's newspaper. Only it's a lot better and more accurate, okay? Okay, to conclude this lecture, turn to the New Testament, 2 Corinthians. Pass the test. God loves to test His children, you know, and I suppose that's why we have tests in school. While you were in school, find out how you're doing. Find out if you've got it or not. Find out if you made the grade. Well, God's no different. He tests you. Every once in a while, He can throw you a little old pop test to quicken your life. You make your head spin. And you might have to make a snap decision. I hope you're familiar with His Word because it'll most likely be right if you have. Chapter 13, verse 5. We're going to conclude with a few verses here. And you probably would know what the subject is. Chapter 13, 2 Corinthians, verse 5. 
This is God's advice to you. Examine yourself, whether ye you be in the faith. Prove, that means a say, test, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. I don't know, how familiar are you with yourself? Know that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And um, uh, that, that would be someone that, you know what a reprobate is in the Greek here? It's one that pretends to be a Christian. A lot of people don't claim to be Christians. That doesn't make them a reprobate. But if somebody claims to be, and they're not, they don't believe a word of it, then that's, boy, that's bad, okay? Examine yourself. You know, it's kind of hard to do. We have, we have some people that truly have problems. I suppose that, let me see if I can go back in memory here real quickly in psychology. Everybody has about 10 to 15 percent of themselves that they're not going to share with anybody. Okay, that's just the way we are. I mean, you're not going to share it with a mate. You're not going to share it with anybody. That's private. And it's things that you have done and seen and said and thought that for one reason or the other, you're not going to share it. But, beloved, always do share it with yourself. Okay. Now, if that number, if that percentage grows up to something like 40%, if a person has 40% of themselves, they're never going to share with anyone else. Then you've got a person that has a bad problem. They really have a problem. They're going to have a mental problem is what it'll ultimately end up being. Okay, So stay balanced. Examine yourself. And, and see that you have, that you utilize Integrity that we mentioned earlier from the Old Testament, and I translated it or said common sense. Always use common sense. When someone comes up to you and said, Did you see that white horse back there? You said, That horse is black. Don't don't agree that it's a white horse, just you know, it's so if you if you don't want to say that horse wasn't white, just say, Whoa. <laughs> Or giddy up scout, you know, so whatever. But use common sense. Don't let somebody tell you, you know, you know it's outright spooky. Don't go along, just butt out, okay? Use common sense. Don't ever let someone go out here about 50 foot off the ground and start building a platform, okay, on something. Every foundation's got to be solid on the rock, okay? And, and you'll do okay, all right? I got so sidetracked there. I digress, some people might call it, I don't know. Verse six, but I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobates. This is old Paul talking as their teacher. He said, I, I, I trust that you know we weren't putting you on, that we weren't just pretending we are Christian. Verse seven, now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. What he's saying here is, I want you to do what you know is right for God, not just to look good in front of us, even if we did fall short. You do good for the right reasons. What is the right reason? Please, God, do you know something? He loves you. You're his child. He cares about you. He's not some force flitting around out in space. You're made in his image. That means he has the same feelings you do. You can make him cry when you disappoint him. Or you can make him happy when you tell him you love him. Verse 8. For we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Did you know that truth will always stand? It doesn't matter what man wants to do to truth. Somebody can lie about you, write stories about you. If it's not truth, don't worry. It can't do any harm to people that mean anything. You've always got nuts that like gossip, okay? I guess we can call them nuts. I, I think so, yeah. 
that like enjoy gossip and make stuff up and stuff. Nine, for we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. That's the way a real teacher should feel. That his students or her students grow strong even if, you're, even if you think you're a little weak, that you're happy when they're strong, they're growing, they're gaining, okay? And this also we wish, even your perfection. I'd like for you to be a lot more matured than I am. That's what he's saying. Boy, that's generous, isn't it? That's Paul talking, and only Paul could probably, uh, that's going a long way. One more verse. Therefore, I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness. Paul was pretty bold. A lot of people would call him an old crank, you know, but he, what he said, he meant, all right? According to the power which the Lord has given me to edification and not to destruction, God expects you to be bold in your belief. And that's, you know, we live in a generation where sometimes boldness is misunderstood, you know? Um, Someone wrote me a letter yesterday and said, Oh, dear brother, you're the, you're the best teacher I've ever heard on television. But you could sure catch a lot more people if you could just be a little sweeter and show a little more love. Well, you know, if I had to part from God's truth, anybody that would be drawn just by sugar and love, I don't want them, okay? I'm not hard up for students, all right? So... The kind of people that deception would draw, you don't need, okay? Just lay the truth out and like it or lump it, uh, that's the way it is. I got a letter from somebody saying that lump it is a bad word, you know? Somebody always, you know, uh, somebody always, uh, you know, linguists are interesting. You know, I guess it's according to colloquialism and different, but I don't even know why I thought that. Anyway, that's the way it goes, you know. Stick with your Father's word regardless of what man may say. Please God. And the people that you should have close to you and love you will love you. Those that don't, hey, have a good trip, okay? No problem. You can still be buddies but they're probably not going to study with you because they probably wouldn't listen to you. And that's fine. Everybody must sail their own ship. But rest assured of this thing. God will test you. God will give you what you can take care of. No more, no less. How much can you take care of? How much do you have? Then God's talking to you. Keep climbing the ladder. And the top rung is the top rung. Go for it, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the written word. We thank you, Father, for your advice, for your guidance. We thank you, Father, for your blessings. We thank you for being with our service personnel, Father, on this day that are in harm's way. Reach out, touch, lead, guide. Thank you for the victory, Father, for we know this nation is pleasing to thee in that you bless it. May we grow to be more pleasing in those that have no love for you, the true Father, Yahweh, the living God. Learn more of thee. In Jesus' precious name, amen.